last IPCC report was done more than almost 10 years ago. And in that time, we've seen very uh, important and significant changes accelerating the pace of change and the impacts that it's having across uh, all mountains around the world. Um, and this is very clear from the data and information that has been collected and assessed as part of those reports. The recognition of mountain and its important services to people all around the world needs to significantly increase in the future. This program allows us to, to come together and to think together on how we can devise solutions that, that can apply globally and how we can create like a common voice. So for me, adaptation is really about thriving, wanting for our children to continue to connect to the mountains mm -hmm. like we have. Um, mountains may not be recognisable in the same way that they were 100 years ago. It's important to recall that many of these impacts and challenges that communities experience in mountain regions and further downstream um, are not, nothing new. This has been part of the history of how we live and, and, and thrive in mountains uh, regions. However, um, what is important to highlight here is the, the accelerating pace at which these changes are now happening and our ability to adapt is becoming compromised. Mountains are extremely complex and diverse environments and in order to characterise them and in order to develop reliable predictive models of future impacts and changes in mountains we have to collate and integrate and apply a wide variety of different data sets, bring insights from the biophysical sciences, from the social sciences um, and also all of the different regions around the world um, to develop a comprehensive picture. So this is why um, collaboration uh, both in terms of different topics but also different uh, regions is really crucial. Mountains in Africa are, are probably a bit different than you know, mountains in Europe or uh, in South America. We have almost 250 million uh, uh, people that are living within these mountain uh, ecosystems and um, unfortunately these mountain ecosystems are also um, a lot more at risk on the climate impacts. Contrary to other regions in which mountains tend to have a more horizontal orientation, in the Andes we have a vertical orientation, so you go from the tropics to the Tierra del Fuego in Antarctica, so that means that you have a huge diversity of environmental conditions. That means that also global change is going to have very diverse impact. Um, what we are hoping to do with uh, the adaptation at altitude is to ensure that there is informed decision making, making sure that we generate knowledge, we ensure that we mainstream policies. You have to create this dialogue between the science and the policy makers so that the programs that you formulate are targeting these problems. It's crucial that uh, policy and the, and the politicians uh, keep abreast of what's happening in the scientific field. We know that there's really only decades left before glaciers have actually disappeared in some regions. So we need action. We need action in the next decade, um, next two decades at the latest. Venezuela, where, where I am from, we have only one glacier left and it's going to be gone in the next, I don't know, five, ten years tops. The city where, where we work, which is called Merida, uh, is called the city of eternal snows. And, uh, and we now say that people are discovering that uh, eternity has an end. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. To avoid waiting for your return to Chamonix during the peak season, once you have finished your visit at the Agree, we advise you go down to Chamonix as soon as possible. I think mountains need more attention of all type of activists, of decision makers, 
of businessmen, of uh, journalists, of local population, guides, tourists and individuals uh, who travel and visit mountains.